Oftentimes, I get labeled a Honda fanboy. It's something I never really called myself, but something some of you have called me. Unfortunately, this label seems to be used with the intent of it being a negative trait. But truth be told, I don't view it as a negative. And today I'm going to explain to you guys why all my bikes are Hondas and what is my love affiliation with Honda. For some of my more traditional viewers, you might notice that my last statement is actually false. Not all my bikes are Hondas. I actually own a 2006 KTM Supermoto and a KTM 125SX dirt bike. But for the sake of this video, we will talk about the fact that I own four Hondas, the CBR 600RR, the VFR 800, the RC51, and the CBR 954RR. Oh, and I guess you can't forget the little Z50 too. I've owned other brands in the past. I've had two Ninja 250s, a Ninja 300, and a KLR 250, and a TTR 125L. Actually, the only brand I've never owned is Suzuki, but you guys know how I feel about the Hayabusa, so there's at least admiration there. Regardless, it's abundantly clear that my favorite brand has always been Honda, especially over the recent years. So to know a little bit about my mentality towards choosing a bike, you have to understand one thing. I try to be a financially responsible person. Well, to a degree. The one thing I hate more than anything is eating up depreciation costs. According to Google, depreciation is a reduction in a value of an asset with the passage of time due in particular to wear and tear. That means the second you ride a brand new bike off of the lot, it starts to depreciate. The way I look at depreciation is almost like paying a fee every time you ride your bike. Here you are looking at a generic photo of a depreciation chart. Now obviously this will be affected differently for each motorcycle. Some do hold their value better than others, but as you can see with this chart, it's generally correct for most makes and models. The first year you lose a large chunk of the value. According to this chart, 30% of your depreciation is set in one year. Now I believe this is a bit extreme. Because according to this chart, after one year of ownership, a BMW S1000RR, which retails at $18,000, is now only worth $12,600, which we all know is not true. Good luck finding a one-year-old BMW S1000RR for under fifteen grand. But the premise remains the same. Most new motorcycles will depreciate the most in the very first five years of their life. But it gets to a point where they sort of flatline a bit and that's where I like to buy my motorcycles. You see, I have a philosophy where I would much rather own three $5,000 motorcycles than having only one $15,000 motorcycle. If I go ahead and buy a 15-year-old VFR 800 for three grand, its value is almost flatlined. So as long as I don't hit any turkeys or just end up overpaying in general, I can buy that VFR and ride it for many years and end up selling it for exactly what I paid for or even possibly at a profit or at a slight loss. The point is that $3,000 isn't really being spent, more or less it's being stored in the form of an asset. And once I have my fund with that asset, I can liquidate it and make that money back and use that money I got back to pick up another asset. So in simple terms, I buy older used bikes because I get to experience many different bikes without losing much money. So how does all of this relate back to Honda? Like I said before, I try to be financially responsible. So my number one thing that I factor into when choosing a bike is reliability. And Hondas are the most reliable brand. I know some of you might want to pull up this chart here which claims that Honda is technically the second most reliable. Well here's the thing, this chart is actually a little bit disingenuous in the first place because it refers to the first four years of a motorcycle's life. Which, to be honest, in the first four years of any motorcycle, especially a Japanese one, it's going to be extremely reliable. And honestly, even after 10 years, all Japanese bikes are more or less going to be reliable. But in my opinion, from what I've experienced, Hondas in the early to mid-2000s are far more reliable than the competition. And if you want to talk about before then, in the 90s, 80s, and especially the 70s, then forget about it. Honda is pretty much the only brand that I could reasonably trust. I mean, look at how many CB900s are out there, even to today. Now, I'm not saying that Hondas are perfect or other brands are bad. I'm sure I'll get plenty of comments about how your 30-year-old Yamaha V-Star has never given you any issues, and that's great for you. But I'm just saying when it comes to what I trust on a personal level, Honda is what it is, especially when it comes to older motorcycles. Now for brand new bikes, honestly, I don't think there's a huge difference. And in fact, in 10 to 15 years, I bet that the other Japanese bikes will be just as reliable as Honda. Just something about the early to mid 2000s era, Honda just had that reliability game locked up. 
I mean, the CBR F4i has been known to get well over 100,000 miles. In fact, there's a guy who hit 200,000 miles on one, and that was 10 years ago. And I bet that F4i is still out there racking up the miles. And on the forums, I've heard countless stories of VFRs and other CBR models reaching well over 100,000 miles as well. So getting into the six-digit mile club is actually a very common achievement for Honda motorcycles. So here's what we know. I like to save money by purchasing old bikes and I like reliable motorcycles. Well, that explains my 17-year-old VFR800, my 12-year-old CBR600 rr and my 14-year-old RC51. They are all reliable, and all of them are going to hold their value really well. The VFR800 had my attraction because of the V4 engine, which sounds amazing and is actually really unique. No other Japanese manufacturer made a V4 quite like the VFR. Trust me, I've looked. And my 2008 CBR 600RR that I have, in my opinion, is still the best 600cc bike ever made, even when compared to the modern ones. Seriously, it's actually faster and more capable than a 2020 CBR 600RR stock for stock. And the RC51, well, do I even have to explain this one? Gear-driven cam B-twin superbike by Honda. I love my Honda lineup. They're all fantastic motorcycles, and in fact, they're all so good that it's become very difficult for me to part with any of them, which is why I've kept them for so long, despite my philosophy of selling and buying new bikes all the time to get different experiences. So that's pretty much the answer to that question that I get all of the time about being a Honda fanboy. But I want to clarify one thing. As much as I love Honda, if I were to buy a brand new motorcycle, it would most likely not be a Honda. For instance, if I were in the market for a brand new 600, then I'd get a ZX6R. If I was in the market for a brand new 1000, then I would get the S1000RR. If I wanted a brand new beginner bike, then I'd get the R3, and I'd probably get a GSXR 750 over a CBR600 or a CBR1000. So Honda really is no longer my favorite brand when it comes to brand new bikes. Honda really is nothing that stands out from the crowd, whereas the other brands do. So in a way, I really don't support Honda like I used to. So if I am a Honda fanboy, then I'm a pretty crappy one at that, because I actually don't blindly follow them. Or else I'd prefer the new lineup over the competition, which clearly I don't. Well, except I do think the CBR1000 RRR is a pretty fantastic bike, but truth be told, I'll never own one, unless maybe 15 years from now when they're like 8 grand, maybe possibly I would then. Also, some of you might point out the irony in me saying that I'm financially responsible when I dump a ton of money into mods on my bikes, such as the over 5 grand spent on my CBR600 RR, which could have been used to just buy a brand new one. Well, first, I didn't want a brand new one because they're slower and not as nice looking as the one I chose, but I'm also going to do these mods regardless if it's a new or a used bike. So instead of blowing 10 grand on a modified 08 CBR600 RR, I'd end up just blowing 15 grand on a modified newer CBR600 RR. So there's that. And also, I can take the mods off when I'm done and sell them separately to recoup some of my losses. I always save the stock parts. Anyway, I'm going to end the video there. I think I've answered the question, and now whenever someone calls me a Honda fanboy, I'll nod my head and send them a link to this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day and stay safe out there.